Solving quadratics with square roots. If we have an x squared equal some value q, to solve for x, we would need to do the inverse operation of a square, which is the square root. So if we were to solve for x, we would end up with two solutions. We would end up with the positive square root of q or the negative square root of q. So we have an example here. I want to know what the value of x is. In order to find the value of x, I will need to square root both sides. Now when I square root both sides, I end up with two separate solutions. Because 36 is a perfect square, when I square root it, I end up getting 6 and negative 6. So it's very important to understand that when you square root, a solution will have two different answers, both the positive and negative value. Because if I were to do the inverse, to substitute it into the x square, when I square a positive 6, I get a positive 36. And when I square a negative 6, I also get a positive 36. So both values are an answer for this expression. So using the square root property to solve quadratics, when you have a perfect square binomial and you want to solve for x, the f what you can do is do the inverse operation of a square. So I want to get to x, and x is inside the parentheses, and there's a square on the outside of parentheses. To solve, I can eliminate that square by square rooting. And I want to do whatever I do to one side of the equation, I need to do to the other. So I'm going to square root both sides here, and that's going to give me the expression inside the parentheses. And then I need to square root the right-hand side, and because it's a perfect square, 36, I'm going to end up with both the positive value 6 and the negative value 6. So I have x plus 5 will equal positive 6 or negative 6. But because we want to know what our x value is, I need to continue to solve until x is by itself. So I have x plus 5. I need to separate it out. I have x plus 5 equals that positive 6, and I have x plus 5 equals that negative 6. And now I can solve for x. It's a one-step equation here. I subtract 5, and I get x equals 1. And then I subtract 5, and I get x equals a negative 11. So again, we have two separate solutions for x. Let's do another example. So again, I have a perfect square binomial. I want to solve for x. I'm going to use that square root property. The square root property means I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of the square on the outside of that parentheses. So what's inside the parentheses will come out. And I end up with x minus 3 equal. And, and because the square root of 13 does not simplify, I'm going to leave it under the radical. But I'm still going to have both the positive square root of 13 and the negative square root of 13. And I need to solve for x. So I'm going to end up having two separate solutions. I add 3 to both sides. Now I can't add 3 to the 13 because the 13 is under the radical. So I just rewrite it so that it's 3 plus or minus the 13. You can leave your answer like this, or you can separate it into two separate answers where you have x equals the positive 3 plus the square root of 13, or x equals the neg or 3 minus the square root of 13. So you have two separate solutions here. So we're going to do one more example like this. Again, it's a perfect square binomial. I'm going to use the square root property to solve. And I'm going to square root both sides. Now, what you need to keep in mind is when you square root a number, and it's not a perfect square, and it's not going to come out of the radical, you have to think if it can simplify. 
meaning is there a perfect square factor that you can factor out and then simplify? So in this case, I have the square root of 32, and that will simplify. When I simplify it, I'm going to end up having the square root of 16, which is my perfect square factor in 32, and the square root of 2, which will be my leftover, which will not simplify. So I can simplify the perfect square piece, which turns into 4, and my leftover will stay under. So in this case, you're going to always have to simplify the radical, just like you always have to reduce fractions. So make sure if the radical simplifies, you simplify it. Now that the radical is simplified, I can solve for x. To solve for x here, I need to add 9 to both sides. Now when you're adding 9 to both sides, be really careful because you can't add the 9 to the 4 because the 4 is being multiplied to that square root of 2. And they're not like terms, so you can't combine them. So your one answer will be x plus x equals 9 plus 4 square root of 2, and your other answer will be x minus, um, x, I'm sorry, x equals 9 minus 4 square root of 2. So this is the square root property. Pause and try. So you see in this case, when you square root both sides, 16 is a perfect square, and you end up getting plus 4 and minus 4. So now you can solve for x, setting x minus 6 equal to the positive and negative 4, and you get x equals positive 10, and x equals positive 2. Pause and try. So in this case, you square root both sides. 15 does not simplify, so it's going to stay under the radical. Don't forget, you're going to have two separate answers, the positive square root of 15 and the negative square root of 15. So you have x plus 8 equals plus or minus the square root of 15. To solve for x, I have to do get rid of that plus 8 by subtracting. I subtract it and I get x equals a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 15. And you can always write it as two separate answers negative 8 plus the square root of 15, or negative 8 minus the square root of 15. These are your solutions. So the next thing we're going to do is solve quadratics by completing the square. So in order to solve quadratics, whatever method you choose to use, you first must have your quadratic in standard form. And standard form means you have to have the highest exponent down to the constant, and it has to equal 0. So you see here I have that a, square, a times x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This is standard form for a quadratic. So now we're going to go through the steps for completing the square on the left-hand side, and I'm going to show you what the steps look like on the right-hand side with an example. So you see in this example I have x squared plus 10x plus 8. It's in standard form. So the first step is if your a value or your coefficient of x squared is any number other than 1, you will need to divide through by that a value. So when you look at the example here, the coefficient of x squared is positive 1. Therefore, we don't need to do this step. So we're going to go to the next step. And the next step is you always have to take whatever the constant is and move it to the other side of the equal sign. And whenever you move from one side of the equal sign to the other, you always have to do the opposite. So in this case, I have a positive 8. So I'm subtracting it over to the other side of the equal sign. So we end up getting a negative 8. So the next step here is what we call completing the square. To complete the square, we're looking for a perfect square trinomial. To complete the square, you take the coefficient of x, which is our b value, you divide it by 2, and then square that number. So in this case, I end up having 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and I square 5, and I get the value 25. So I'm going to take this 
25 and I'm going to complete the perfect square trinomial by adding it to both sides of the equal sign. And because I'm adding it to both sides of the equal sign, it balances out and it doesn't change the value of the original equation. So now I have a perfect square trinomial that I can factor to a perfect square binomial. And to factor it, we're going to take the b value divided by 2 and we're going to have a squared binomial. So remember when you factor trinomials, you're always looking for factors of the end number or your constant that will add up to your middle number. And then it will be in factored format. So if I were to factor this trinomial and not use this little formula over here on the left, that parentheses x plus b divided by 2 parentheses squared, if I were to factor factors of 25 that add up to 10 would be 5 times 5. So I'd end up with parentheses x plus 5 parentheses parentheses x plus 5 parentheses, which is a perfect square binomial of x plus 5. So instead of doing all of that, I'm just using this little formula and I'm going to end up with a factored trinomial into a perfect square binomial. So I end up getting x plus 5 parentheses squared. That is that perfect square trinomial factored form. Now notice here I have that square root property. So now I can use the square root property to solve. So I've created that so that I can solve for x. So now I'm going to square root both sides. And remember, the square root of 17 is not going to simplify, so it's going to stay under the radical. And now to solve for x here, I need to move that 5 over, and it's positive, so I'm subtracting it from both ends. So now my solution for this quadratic equation, x equals a negative 5 plus the square root of 17 and a negative 5 minus the square root of 17. Pause and try. So your first step here is to move the constant over. It's plus 3, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. The next step is to take that b value, which is a negative 6, divide it by 2 and square it. So you end up getting 9. Three, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. You need to take that 9 and you need to add it to both sides. Now notice that when you add it to both sides, now I have that perfect square, I'm sorry, now I have that squared trinomial and I can factor it into the perfect square binomial. So I'm going to end up factoring and I'm going to get here because I have b value is minus, it's going to end up being minus inside the binomial. So we get x minus 3 parentheses squared equals 6. A negative 3 plus 9 is 6. Now I use the square root property. I square root both sides. The square root of 6 is not going to simplify, so it's going to be plus or minus 6, square root of 6. And now I solve for x. To solve for x, I need to add 3. I add 3 to both sides. I get 3 plus or minus the square root of 6. Let's do one more. Pause and try. So in this one, we already had the constant over. So all I need to do is to take that b value, divide it by 2, and square it. And I get 16. I'm going to add that to both sides. Once I add it to both sides, I see I have that perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to factor it. And it's going to factor to a perfect square binomial by taking that b value, divide it by 2, and then have the square on the outside of the binomial. Now you need to use the square root property. The square root property, square root both sides. But notice here, when I square root 56, it's not a perfect square, but it can be simplified. I have a perfect square of 4 and the square root of 14, which will not simplify. So I'm going to square root the 4 and I'm going to end up with plus or minus 2 root 14. Now I can solve for x.
to solve for x, I subtract 4 from both sides, and my answer will be a negative 4 plus the square root of 14, and a negative 4 minus 2 times the square root of 14. So it's x equals a negative 4 plus 2 times the square root of 14, and a negative 4 minus 2 times the square root of 14. So be really careful. If the radical can simplify, you will need to simplify the radical. Also, do not combine that whole number with the number in front of the radical because they're not like terms. This is how you will leave your answer.